Hi, this is Mike of Mini PC Tech, where we talk about all things Mini PC. Now, I have a separate unboxing video for the Canna Kit Raspberry Pi Kit 8GB Pro Kit, and you see what it has. But one thing you didn't see on, <coughs> on the unboxing video is I said there's a fan. The fan's right there. There's the heat sink. Here are the three pieces of the case and the power supply. And we will go ahead and start putting it together in a moment. So before we put it together, let's take a quick tour again. I did an unboxing, but it's probably worthwhile doing it one more time. So this is the base. It's well ventilated and it has spaces here for the USB-C, which is a power and two micro HDMI uh, connectors. The, it comes with uh, two micro HDMI to HDMI adapters, six foot. So that should be enough to get you a dual HDMI. It also has a middle here, has space for ethernet and four USB ports. And then the top, which we're going to get to in a moment, uh, it holds the fan in place. And also I understand there is enough space here in here uh, to put a, um, I'm gonna call it a cable for the GPIO uh, connector uh, to have a, a ribbon come out of the case. And also I guess you can also add a POE hat uh, this is the, the card, the Raspberry Pi. It's very small, say a little around the size of a credit card. And here you see, again, the micro HDMI and the USB-C for power. You see the GPIO pins and you see the four USB connectors and Ethernet. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out here is you can tell that it is a an eight gigabyte in this case, because there should be, there it is, just took me a moment to find it, um, a connector there that says there's eight gigabytes of memory. So that's one way to, to tell. Uh, so let's go ahead. The next step is to put things together. Okay, so the next step is to connect the fan up. Now the fan was not shown really in my box because it was in this little case here that was part of the um, heat sink. So it was kind of hidden, but it's there. And here is the fan. And so the next thing to do is to hook the fan in to the case here. And the way we do that is you see there's four little holes here and we want to connect it up and we want to do it so that the uh, logo is facing us and it's in. Now, once we have the fan connected and we want to connect it to the board and the way we do that is there's this little thing here that we need to remove and we can do that either it says with tweezers or a fingernail and I can just pick it up with my fingernail and then we take the wire from the fan and the instructions say make sure the yellow wire is facing the outside so we do that and like anything in electronics it's made so that it only goes in one way and just push it in a little bit and the fan is connected. And now we go on to the next step. The next step is the heat sink. The heat sink has a bunch of thermal pads on the bottom as I'll show you. I take it out of the case here and the small one should align with the small pad here, the small chip there. 
So you just want to check it before you put it on. See if that makes sense to you so you know how to do it. And then you just go ahead, take the tape off so that you have the surfaces are ready to put on. A bunch of little guys here. Right. Actually, I did it wrong. This is the way it goes. Is that right? Mm. No, that was right. It's like that. Okay. And we pick it up. And we line it up like so. And press. Okay. Now we have it on. All right, so let's go on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to put the case together. Um, I don't know why we did this except to say, hey, here's how you do it. Let's remove the fan temporarily and just drop this on here temporarily. Now, we take the bottom part and you see that there is a slot here and we are going to slide the bottom into that. And it should go, goes at a slight angle and then it should just pop in if we did it right or did we do it wrong. Hmm. No, that's right. So it should go in the bottom here and it went in, I think. Yep, it's in. So that's all you do is just slide it in. And then if it went in right, which I don't think it did, huh? All right, so that should go. This is where the micro SD card goes. So that should go in there. See the micro SD? That should align with that. And you should just slide it in. I guess there's a little gradient there. Oh, this is fun, but it's not that hard. I just you know, it's not something I do every day. And then that should align with the case. Hmm. All right. The next step is we want to put the middle cover on. And that's going to go, you see where the Ethernet and all that, and Ethernet here, and that goes here. Make sure the fan is out of the way. There. Okay, so now that's on. And now, this is kind of troublesome, I guess he was just saying, hey, in the video that you'll watch, here's how to do it. We reattach this as we did before with the four and make sure that the, the fan is facing us. Like so. Put it together somehow. I believe so. Okay. And this should just snap right in. Hello, it should just snap right in. Unless we got it backwards. No, I think. Well, yeah, we got it backwards. Okay. Let's do it the other way. So the way I know I got it backwards is, you see there's two slots here and they go in these two, I believe. You see how they're curved and they're curved and so they go there. I fumble so you don't have to. Oh, got it backwards again. All right, this time it'll go. The two curves, and then there's two there, so it just goes there, just the regular curves. And we're in. And you notice that there's holes there. That's intentional. You may play with GPIO, and that allows the ribbon out, and that also allows some more air. So we're done for now.
just as a check to show that we did this right. You can see the USB lines up, the Ethernet lines up. There is the SD. Supposedly there's a power button here, although I don't see it. Hmm. Maybe you gotta, yeah, you gotta push in there to get to it. It's not easy. And then you have the power and the HDMI. So the only thing that's a little annoying, and I don't know whether I did this wrong or not, and I assume I didn't, because everything else is aligned, is the power button requires you to take a little stick or something in there and turn it on and off. Oh well. That's the way it's built. That's the way it is. I guess it's to make sure you don't accidentally bump up against it. Okay, we're almost ready to go. Let's get this thing together. So the next thing we do is we take the 128 gigabyte, yes, I said 128 gigabyte flash drive or little chip and put it in the chip reader. And so we take that out carefully. I guess they don't want us to touch the, I'm doing it anyway, touch the painter and it goes into this little port here with the numbers down. And hopefully we did everything right and it'll go in. Mm. There it goes. Okay, just needed to give it a little, make sure it's right. And now it's in. Okay. The next thing to do is to plug the power into the micro USB. Here's the power. And we plug that into the micro USB. And then we've got one micro HDMI. I actually don't have a portable HDMI monitor. Need to put that on my list. But I do have an HDMI TV across the room. So we're going to, once we get everything together, get it, try to get it working over there and I'll demonstrate it. And then we need a keyboard and a mouse. So I've got a keyboard which I'll plug in to one USB port here. A little bit hard, but it worked. And the mouse. Again, these are cheapy machines. These are like eight to $10 online. Makes the whole thing well worth it. Okay, so that went in. Everything is together. I'm going to now readjourn to the other side of the room and see if everything worked. Okay, so I wanted to show you all that. Well, it did for a moment. It had the raspberry. And there it goes. Welcome to Raspberry Pi Desktop. Not the best picture in the world, and you're looking at, at me mostly while this is coming up. And you see the mouse is working. Let me go pick that up off the floor. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Desktop. We have a few things to set up. And let's click Next the mouse works. Let's change this to United States. Time zone is going to be Los Angeles, I bet. Yep, close enough. Use English language, use US keyboard. Next. I realize this isn't great. Okay, I've got to enter a username, password, but you get the idea. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and we're all good now.
Be sure to like, share and subscribe to get more videos like this.